call it to order. Pick up the black gum conversation. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, public comment. No member of the public present. Moving on to approval of minutes. Not quite the previous minutes, I think, right? These are two meetings ago. Just to yes. orient everyone. Yes, two meetings mm -hmm. on April 4th. Sorry, I wrote there just a few things. No, it is to that. Huh. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I do okay. it myself. 
I make a motion to accept. Motion to admit you have to second it. I second the motion. There we go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Rob. Excellent. Was not present. All right, moving on to the to-do list review. Any comments, thoughts on that? The only thing I want to mention is I'm not sure if, if folks have had a chance to look at the landscaping company spreadsheet. Um, I did share it on Drive and um, added ones that people had suggested. So. To look at that again. I looked yeah. at it a while ago, but I'll, I'll look at it. Okay. There are currently, um, let's see, we mailed to 25, and there are a few more added. So. Have you gotten any feedback from that at all? Yeah, we got a feedback from um, CL Frank. Chris Frank was uh, very appreciative of the fact that we sent it out and um, was really happy that we're doing this the correct way to reach out to the com companies and being proactive. And then we've got a request from Cotton Tree Service mm -hmm. for a hard copy of the tree planting oh, uh, cool. guidelines. guidelines. So nice. One of my to-dos was to call everybody, and those folks were super nice. Mm -hmm. Cotton. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you an email to our four who came back. So I oh. called those four and left messages. I just okay. can't remember what they are, and she can't. Uh, one with a Halley. Yeah, uh, one I sent the wrong address in East Hampton. Uh, there's two. Was there's one two on other State ones. Street, I yep. remember. So. I, I'll send you an email tomorrow, I'll let yep. you know, but I did call them and leave a message I want to back from them. Okay. Yeah, a few of them, uh, when I called, said not a working number or number not in service, so it might be those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thanks for doing that. That I think is a cool initiative. You know, that we're doing. That's good. Yeah, it took a couple hours actually to get all the numbers and make the calls. Sure. But um, the people who who um, I got through to, only one said that he didn't feel like it was beneficial um, because he uh, more of an equipment company. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we could talk about that during the um, Arbor Day debrief. But that was one of my to-dos, and that that's done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, chair report. Chair is unable to attend. I believe she did write that press release which got the mayor's approval and then got picked up yep. by the Gazette. <coughs> that was good. Uh, let's move right along to the tree warden report. So a couple things. National Grid donated to us two sun coal honey locusts. That was from National Grid's Hazard Tree Mitigation Program, which is separate from the line clearance operation. So they um, were responsible this year for trimming um, the feeder route from the Florence substation all the way up Spring Street, Main Street in Leeds, and down Florence Street. So they took a mix of some uh, diseased and dying public shade trees and private trees. So they gave us two trees to plant somewhere. So we have two extra trees for free. Um, and I went through the whole process with National Grid and identified all the trees and made a bunch of final recommendations to the list, but there was no trees that were healthy that came down. They were all trees that were uh, either in various states of decay or in decline. Um, I sent uh, sent you, afford you an email that has a link on it where you can actually fill out the electronic application and then they can get it on the agenda for the, the, the next city council meeting or probably not this next one but the, the, the second one this month. So one and done with the city council, right? It's not like a two No, I think, it's, I think it's two readings. Yeah? Yeah, I think. Does that put us in jeopardy for a June meeting then? No. I don't think so. Um, by then, by, by then it should be done. 
Um, I got an email from uh, Molly Freilisher, and I don't see anything on the agenda. Um, so the uh, Tree City USA um, date, as I've mentioned before, is uh, May 30th, and the set in stone is going to be at the garden house. So there's a nine nine o'clock sign in and call, and I can I'll forward this to all of you. So there's a nine a.m. sign in and coffee. 910 welcome by Julie Coop. 930 welcome from the mayor, David Narkowitz. Um, 940 is going to be a presentation from uh, John Berryhill from uh, Smith College. And they, they actually be, are the Tree Campus US Tree Campus USA Award, I guess, this year. At 950, uh, Lily and myself are going to give our presentation, North Angeles Community Tree Program. The break at 11 is uh, working with volunteers. It's going to be presented by Rick Harper at UMass from from UMass Amherst. 11:30 is National Grid uh, presentation by Lance Wade and Brand Brandy Tarantino. And then there's a lunch break, and then from 1 to 2:45 they give out the awards. So I've reserved enough space for all the commissioners um, if they all can make if you all can make it. But I will forward you this email just so you have it. So it's basically nine to four. Is that what you said? Nine to three. three if three. you decide, okay. if you decide to stay for the whole, the whole shebang. If you can do it, if you can't, then that's that's cool too. I'll come back with all the goodies. Chicken. <laughs> What's that? I'll oh, chicken. You'll have the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> just finger sandwiches. Just, uh, just egg salad. Oh. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention is. Um, so the other day I was actually going to stop and shop on my lunch break to get my lunch. And I happened to see Bill's Landscaping Service over at, over on King Street. And so I went and got my lunch and went back and I was watching the guys do the volcano motion. I let them do the volcano motion and I drove away. Didn't say anything to them. So I got the information that you compiled and I got their phone number. And I called and left a message in the answering service. And the owner, Bill, I don't know, I forgot his last name. He called me back within an hour, oh. and he and I had a, a, a fruitful conversation about volcano mulch. And within two days, they came back and took all the volcano mulch away oh, wow. on their trees that are in the, that they were putting them on uh, in the public right away that are under there. So they do all the Leo dealership, Leo Group dealerships. So they took it all away, and then they're they're going to go back and take. The volcano mulch away from the private trees in the as well. Wow, that's nice job. That's huge. You know. <laughs> wow. And then he asked my opinion about pollarding because oh, like? pollarding mm. is a type of pruning oh. where they basically just oh. flat top mm. the trees because the dealership wanted to flat top their own trees inside there. And I just said, well, you're just going to create a hedge in a sense because the trees are so close together. Mm. So you should just convince them to let the trees actually grow out. Yeah. And I said, lift the limb them up. Limb them up. And I yeah. said, that way there are people on the street can actually look in mm -hmm. while they're driving by and see the cars. Mm -hmm. I said, if not, you're going to create this mm -hmm. this layer, this mm -hmm. almost hedge-like layer, because it'll stimulate the growth to actually go um, uh, horizontal instead of vertical. So. I'll still every single year. And he said, thank you. He did receive the information. Oh, good. And he yeah. said, I am aware of the destructive nature of volcano mulch. And I said, that's, well, that's interesting. I said, I noticed most of your properties you have looking at. She goes, yeah, I know. She's like, I'm working on that. So <laughs> I left it at that. So that was uh, awesome. Yeah, that was uh, that's, that's about it. No, no public shade tree hearings uh, in the near future. So that's it. Okay. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Arbor Day debrief. Start with this one. You want to keep going, Rich, and then we'll move on to others who participated. Sure. So Arbor Day um, went on uh, as planned, um, which was uh, a very uh, eventful day. We gave away roughly, I think, about 400 to 425 whips, give or take. I did all these the town and count them after we were done <coughs> over a two-day period. Um, it was the table was fully staffed. Um, by uh, volunteers that were either Tree Northampton folks or people that volunteered through Tree Northampton, nice. which was great. So we got to meet some new folks and new faces. Um, the mayor came down uh, to the front of City Hall and gave the proc proclamation at 9.30 in the morning. And um, 
that aspect of it was great. And we actually, Jen, Robin, myself, um, and I think like eight volunteers mm -hmm. planted nine trees, uh, five in the public right of way and four. Oh, Molly, too. Oh, oh Molly Hale, sorry. Hale. Molly Hale, Hale yep, uh, planted the nine trees at, in, at the Gazette property, which actually took us like two and a half. Maybe two and a half hours at the most. And we left just before the rain came yep. down. Right. So it was nice. nice. Yeah. Just well, it worked time. well. <laughs> the trees were. And I got Mr. Riff, I got Mr. Riffenberg to sign the setback planting agreement for him. And I got a wet signature notarized it, so I just have to go with Alan Seawald to the registry deeds. Is that our first one? That's our first client. All right. Nice. And many more to. Just walking around telling everybody it's a great thing. You don't have to worry about the trees. It'll be a city tree forever. People are like, really? You're going to come and take care of it? Yep. Nice. So we have a couple of other potential sales. All right. But we're, that's for another subject. So I, I don't have anything. There was an article with a photo in the paper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that came out. And I don't look. You were, yeah, you were in. Yeah, you were in it. The, the, all the volunteers yeah. were in there. And okay. Junior Hampton posted some nice photos on their website of all of us working in. It was, uh, and of course my crew was there, which, you know, they did all the heavy lifting in the yeah. sense. Uh, they nice. brought all the plant material there. They brought the mulch. They picked the mulch debris. They watered the trees in the end. Staked so, them. And staked them. Mulch. Yeah. So, and the head of the DPW came too. Right? Yes, and the director came Director, out. that's yep. the title. So it was, uh, it was a pretty awesome day. Mm -hmm. well, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. I'd rather do that than be in the office mm -hmm. in the day. I think we had a few new volunteers too that had that live in North Hampton and got pretty yeah. inside younger, a <clears throat> couple younger people. I don't think they planted before. They no. lived in North Hampton. The two young guys live well. Person I was working with, yeah, Jen, I think her name was. I'm so bad at that. It was a Molly. Oh, maybe that's who it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a young Molly. And, okay. And uh, she ah, lives, I think she was on South uh, Street. On South Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molly, yeah, that's who I work. And I'm with. hoping we we have her yeah. on that issue. Yeah, she liked it. <coughs> yeah. yeah, the trees look great. I drove by. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. Now they've cleaned up all the brush down yep. there and nice. stuff. So that looks good. And then I I did speak to Mr. Riffenberg about if they wanted more trees to be planted on their property, they should contact Tree Northampton. Mm -hmm. So if they choose to plant trees that are closer to their parking lot, they can work with them to at least get the volunteers mm -hmm. to plant them work with them, but I, I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they've contacted them or not, but no, just not get out there. But they still got quite a bit of a lawn there to work with. So. Yeah, they got some big trees. In yeah, there. but I, mean, I, I think what I was really, I was just impressed by the fact that we could get nine trees planted and four of them were B&B &B in you know, two and a quarter hours. Yeah. Yeah. Granted, the digging wasn't difficult, but yeah, it was pretty Got good soil there, right? There is yeah. good soil there, yeah. 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 Better than some sandy loam down there. Very that was, that was fun. Good. Well, good. just a few more comments uh, sure. regarding the outreach. Um, just looking at the spreadsheet here, Jeremy Cotton said that he um, was very appreciative not only of the information um, in the direct links to the website, um, but just how it levels the, the playing field. Um, and spoke with Richard Jasky. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. on the Ag Commission. Um, anyway, he said he learned a lot by talking with you, and um, really is appreciative also of our outreach and information that we're providing. And anyway, those are a couple that I really stood out. So, did, did they get a link to the whole pack, packet of the planting guidelines? So the, the, the link was sent to them in the letter. So all they've got to do is just type it in. Right. Yeah. And you're reprinting some of those guidelines? Yes, what I'm going to, uh, so I, well, this is off topic. It's off topic. Okay, I take it back. No, it's okay. Do you mind if I just go off topic for a minute? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I met with Alicia two Mondays ago. And Alicia and I have uh, done some updating of the, of the tree planting guidelines um, and adding um, tree protection details in the back. Oh, nice. Also putting in the DCR fact sheets that they have that are available to, to talk about setback plantings and MGL Chapter 87. 
we also are going to we also felt that their planting um, fact sheet actually was a little better than the fact sheet that we had in there so yeah, we yeah, decided yeah. to swap them out yeah um, we also decided to add two species one was scarlet oak because they're not in there we plant in front of the library mm -hmm. and then um, common hawthorn or otherwise known as ohio ohio hawthorn which is really it's not ohio hawthorn i can't remember the latin name at the moment but it's it's well. something. yes Hawthorns are to sort of match what the planning board has for their subdivision rules and regs mm -hmm. um, minus the ash mm -hmm. so what we did is we also um, she's going to add text where all the ash trees are in there you know in bold letter red, uh, uh, red lettering do not plant mm -hmm. uh, do not plant these trees uh, due to emerald ash borer mm -hmm. we're not we're not going to take it out at this time because in order to do that Alicia would have to reformat all of that yeah. because that is a part that was from Vermont right and that means that she would actually have to basically reformat all the, the pages that we copied. So basically, we have our own. She'd have our own. We have our own guide. I like that it says "do not plant" because that's more information than it's not having it in there. Yeah, it is, and I mean, so I'm, hopefully with that, we'll we'll basically get the planning board to it. I'm just trying to make it so that we can get this adopted and make sure it's in the other yeah. package. Yeah. The other thing I thought that should get rid of them was a recommendation from um, Carolyn Mission of Planning was to actually take a lot of the references so when you turn some of the pages it says Vermont Tree Guide she said you know she goes now that you've explained to me I understand but if someone picks this up they're going to wonder why they're planting trees from Vermont mm -hmm. so we, I asked Alicia to basically block those out mm -hmm. but still give Vermont its recognition in yeah. the front um, so those are really the only changes my goal is to have bunch of copies made for the uh, Tree City USA ceremony oh, and then actually yeah. put them on a table oh, somewhere nice. with yeah. DCR's <coughs> material mm -hmm. so people can just take them. Mm -hmm. So well, hopefully if she's able to get them all done and then I can get them to the printer, we can have that to set to go. What was the first thing you mentioned, Rich, that you're putting in the back of it? Uh, there's going to be, so we had to, uh, we needed to, the ANSI standards, um, NC 300 standards part five which talks about tree protection. Oh. They're copyrighted, so you have to design your own tree protection diagrams oh. and language, which I or the language that goes with it, but it's not a lot. So she basically took all of the drawings that I gave her and actually drew them up really nicely so they did not look like the ANSI oh. standards and they're gonna be in our book. Oh wow. Yeah. That's she spent a lot of time on this and has done a lot of awesome things. And yeah. She's been really great to work with, and we're very lucky to have her talent. Wait, maybe we I can agree. create a, a volunteer award. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, so that's, so that's, that's kind of a bad idea. It's where this. Just have a, uh, like a volunteer recognition. Yeah, just, you know, have it once a year. That's not a bad idea. Today's the start of our fourth year. Wow, it is? Yeah, we started in May of 2015. Oh my goodness, I didn't think it was that long. Okay, great. Thank you. And now we're moving on to the 2018 planting plan. Next steps, I imagine that this was to discuss um, now that Arbor Day is done, uh, how we're moving forward with the remainder of the 220 whatever trees we got up our sleeves? Well, that's a good question. So we are obviously trying, I think, trying to draw, we have to figure out how many trees we can plant over on Orchard Street so we can kind of draw that out of the mix. But um, I've been responding to calls from folks who calls for setback planting so I've been meeting with them. Rob has met with uh, or actually I don't know, yeah you've met with one person and then uh, Alicia's Alicia's yeah, yeah, lined up another person. I met with the setback person. <coughs> uh, a lot of the calls come in even the ones that we think are setback calls when you get there it's really tree belt calls. So, yeah. so I've met several um, you know people just call they want a tree. I, mean, I don't think the difference between setback and tree belt. It's clear, especially yeah. we're going to some places where 
which I have a new term right away, right of way planting, where there's new sidewalk. Yeah. And the difference, I, I just call it right of way because it's not a tree bill, but it's often in the right of way, so it's not a setback. Right. Like my street. Yeah, yeah, like your street. Yeah. So, it, yeah, in your street, those trees are pretty close to being either, right? Where they clearly. What, what is it, 20 feet? No, each street has a different width, and so I'm learning how to measure the tree width. Oh, yeah. They, they generally come in rods, which are 16 and a half feet. Yep. And so what you can do is there are maps where you can measure the width, and then if it comes out to like 33 feet, then you know you're right, it's two rods. If it's 40, whatever, 47, 49, then. That's no, two, two rods is 33. Yeah, it's, uh, three rods is 49 and a half. Yeah, 49 and a half. So the thing is, when you measure it, you don't find that out. You find out 50 or 48, and then you go, okay, that's that's what it is. And then you go from the middle of the walk back. And this has become important because it's easiest to plant the trees. It's easier to plant the trees in the right way. Right. So we're still, you know, we're honoring plantings that we had lined up from last year to try to finish those off because we had to stop in uh, late November. And then we're going to be planting what we can on the identified gateway streets. Yeah. So, um, uh, on just example on Pleasant Street, if you drive down Pleasant Street, you'll see going towards the circle on the right. There are seven stakes, and um, wow. those stakes are put there uh, because there are parking spaces adjacent to them. So volunteers can go plant those trees without. Got it. DPW. Yep. So most places where trees can be planted without DPW, and, and, it's, and, and again, we're trying to, the whole kind of idea of this whole volunteer thing is to try and plant the trees without the resources of DPW. Right. If you have to have DPW come out, they can probably just take a hole and plant the tree. Right. So kind of like, <laughs> right. so, so, you know, and, I, and I'm sure that sometime during the summer or fall, uh, we'll go out, DPW will probably put out some bleeding lights, but for, for the moment, so you can see um, up there on uh, Pleasant Street, there are seven stakes on Pleasant Street. Uh, I, I, there was a little lack of clarity on my part because I didn't listen carefully to what you said, but I think on Bridge, going past the post office, you get to Pomeroy, and then it turns into State. No, no, Grant Avenue. At, at Grant Avenue? Yeah. Grant Avenue. Okay. And those are, the one, those are the sites that I, Lily, and I think maybe folks looked at them yeah, Molly. and then yeah and then I went out and re-looked at them and um, so whatever's on that list was sites that I um, right all the way to Grant Ave okay so you when we can plant to Grant Ave mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. unclear about that and there's some big spaces on the right hand side yeah. of the street going out of town yeah. Yeah. and there was one that got ran over yeah. oh we were there today we put two trees back oh all right and yeah. um, we also cut the, cut the stump, and there's a sprout coming out of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're trying everything we can to get a tree. There. It's not the trees already been hit twice, so uh, no. that's okay. the second time. So now, oh really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're doing. Maybe that's why there's not a tree there. <laughs> why is it so vulnerable? Uh, there's on a, the there's a curve there, and uh -huh. people either are missing the curve, or the construction folks are backing into it from mm -hmm. building that those kind of things. The talk on the street is the construction people, but I don't know if that's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're trying to have trees there. <clears throat> so what, once we're done getting the, what we can done on the gateways with the stock that we have available, we're going to move into the individual ward. Nice. And I think we're going to probably, you probably see an uptick in the amount of ward planting that we do based upon two things. One, locations that we can find in the public right of way. Um, that are suitable for the species we have, and two, and setback plantings. So you may have requests for setback plantings more in some wards than the others, but we're gonna try to balance it out to the best of our ability. I mean, I think to have the planting guidelines is great, but I think sometimes we have, I mean, obviously, we recognize the fact that the planting guidelines are just what they are, a guideline. Mm -hmm. So things are never gonna to be totally equal, um, but we are gonna try our best to make them equal, and we actually may end up doing more plantings you know, you know, increase the numbers from seven to maybe maybe to ten to possibly fifteen in, in the individual ward. 
numbers to try to balance it out so we get to the 250 number. Mm -hmm. um, but still keeping the focus on the areas that you know the commission recommended to be to be planted this year and trying to do the best that we can. Pleasant Street is kind of I can't think I saw Pleasant Street. Pleasant Street's really difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I went and got the best. Yeah. But it, 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 it's, there's a little more room there. That's why there's parking there. The tree belt's a little wider. So those seven stakes, actually two of the stakes are in a questionable zone. They're going to be locust trees. But there were five stakes that went in places where I think we'll actually get trees on Pleasant Street. And, and beyond that, you know, then it becomes, as you've mentioned, you know, structural yeah, soil, else. different idea, you know. Yeah. Or after we filled up everything else, go back to it and say, well, we've got nothing else to do. <laughs> Planted all the trees we can we can be mm -hmm. planted and then start putting them in places where they're... Yeah. I mean, maybe in the long run for like Pelican Street or some of the places we could, I don't know if that's available to, right? What? I don't know if that would be a, like matched, like the grant that we got for, um, well, for the doing the inventory, that if we could get some solid kind of prices for, you know, renovation of like two sidewalk blocks or something like that, um, you know, maybe we could get a grant and do, you know. It, it is definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. Rob's right, you are going to run out of places, especially when you get up to Hockenham, by up to Hockenham yeah. Road. Everything is really hardscaped there. Yeah. Yeah. And so whatever you plant is really going to be... Tree pit. It's going to be a tree pit yeah. and it's going to struggle. Um, yeah. They're going to pave Pleasant Street this year. So, oh, really? yes, so basically what you need, Pleasant Street is um, most likely not going to change mm -hmm. anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the other, the other issue is that the Hockenham Road to the Rotary um, is, according to the Street Peaks, does belong to the city, but the city never formally accepted it from the state, the state it's just- Hockenham kind of, Road to the circle? Yes, is actually Hockenham Road to the flood control wall at Bowen Alley. Oh, it is the city, but we haven't accepted it. Right. Huh. Wow. Yeah. So that, there's more potential to possibly plant okay. um, farther down Pleasant Street, up to the rotary. But I, I don't think there's been a formal acceptance on the city council's part. It was just kind of down at the registry of deeds and there you go, thank you very much. And so we ended up having a plow that this year. We never had a plow that was just not going to So, well, so yeah, we're, we're plugging away, working with Tree Northampton and we have volunteers connected to get, to get things done. So, is much planting uh, planned for Florence? The center of Florence? Or any part of Florence? Well, that wasn't identified as one of the locations for a gateway. But, yeah. but, but we planted trees in Florence. Yeah, we did. We planted trees at uh, Florence Heights, mm -hmm. which is uh, where the bus stop is where kids and mm -hmm. people that live there get off the PTA and the school buses. Four trees, I believe. Yeah. Five. I saw the stakes out on yeah, Florence they're Road. They're trees now. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. Yep. Awesome. So that's Florence. So that's it, awesome. That's good. It does get moved around. I think the question might be, are we going to plant in Florence Center? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that if they finished that construction of where there was a gas station, we had planned to put trees there, and then we didn't because of the construction. They are supposed to put trees there. Oh, very good. Yes. Where? In the back? There's nothing. The, the sidewalk yeah. goes right up to the building. Yeah, yeah, oh, this uh, is the new building. The one they're building right now. No, the new oh. The oh, that. New building. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So part, of that, sorry, part of that site plan tool was they had a Oh. They, they've got to do mitigation for the lot for the trees they took down in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, they're going to oh. be doing some plantings in the public right away using structural soil. Oh, uh, yeah. Bay, yeah. Well, it would be great if we could all go see it. Yeah. And make Flexi sure you don't do the uh, volcanoes. No, no, the no, volcanoes are out. We're going to blow the volcanoes <laughs> are out. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. Well, that flexi so, paint, really? So, yeah. That's awesome. And we did previously plant some trees downtown in Florence. So oh, that's exciting. Right. We've really worked hard in Florence. Like that building, I think Molly's talking about on the corner, it's relatively new. I guess where you were saying there was no. Yes, right. I spent hours with that guy trying to, the owner of that building, trying to convince him that it would improve his property value if we could plant, because there are at the edges of his property. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, I've already done enough for this city. Oh. Whatever that means. So, mm -hmm. 
Maybe I shouldn't say that. But I mean, it just shows you that, 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 that even giving trees away, it's not, you know. It's not easy, and I think that, you know, I think the way that we've planted trees in the past has been good, and I think every year we seem to be improving it. And, you know, when you start to fill up all the viable spaces that are easy, you know, low-hanging fruit, you start to move into places where it becomes uh, more difficult because there is resistance. You know, I have to meet with a, uh, a resident tomorrow who was disgruntled about two trees being put in the tree belt on one fellow drive. And, you know, unfortunately, she was not very polite on the phone uh, with Terry today, so I'm going to meet with her tomorrow. But again, it's, you know, I, I, you know, I definitely don't think we're, I definitely don't think that, I think we are not following the path of least resistance and we're moving forward and trying to just educate folks that, you know, we need to, we want to plant this tree here, this isn't the public right away. Um, and then as Rob has indicated, working with folks to do setback plantings. Um, and because I have to be involved in the setback plantings in a sense, at the very end, mm -hmm. at least to get the wet signature and get the notarized document from the individual, but it's kind of opened my eyes a little bit because I, I don't think that I've actually really, Tree Northampton has done that uh, for us. And so I haven't had to do that. So I actually went out one day and uh, Rob and I, our connection got messed up with it. So I dealt with the resident she was very nice. And I think we've, con I've con between the two of us, we've convinced her to plant two trees in her backyard, or in her front yard, so. 66. But I mean, it's, yes. So it's, it's, uh, it takes time though. It just takes time to meet with people. But I think it's definitely <coughs> worthwhile, so. My suspicion is too, if we get some plantings in some of the underrepresented wards, you know, or if we put some of those signs out with them, yep. you know, people will, they may get more interested, you know. We've put a lot of trees in most of the wards. It's amazing <laughs> if you actually look at the list, and we've been in Florence a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been, we've been out Bridge Road, yeah, mm -hmm. Bridge Road. We've been into some of the subdivisions there. Mm -hmm. We've been, um, more trees in downtown Florence uh, at the medical center. They uh, set uh, Florence Medical Center. Oh, yeah. Two trees by the two pin Oh, you put one right by the bus stop, right? Uh, I just saw that today. Two, yeah. two trees by the bus stop. So, I mean, there. And, and then if you go back one street to the, uh, from uh, Elm, from the main street, the one, the long one that runs the High Street. High Street. We yeah. plant a whole oh, yeah, bunch we of trees on High Street. Uh, and so, we, we are, we are getting to Florence quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah, I think the more that we, the, the longer this goes on, I think we're going to have to develop probably some kind of a master. So, like, it, so for example, when we go to do vehicle replacements here, we actually have to develop a capital improvements program. The capital improvements program lasts; it's a five-year program that we that we actually did last year. So we have costs built out for vehicles five years. I think eventually we will end up having to do this for trees as well. Huh. Because once it's captured in capital improvements and our tree budget has now gone into um, the capital part of the DPW budget, that I think that we can be assured unless something drastic happens, we'll continue to get those funds. So um, if we were to do a large scale planting somewhere or wanted to do multiple long term large scale tree plantings or tree rehabilitation in certain wards, we have to have a plan that we can show that we can actually put mm -hmm. in the capital improvements. Or if we don't have to go in capital improvements and we keep getting this funding every year, then we should have some kind of a master plan or capital plan. Um, and I think this year being the first year where we kind of identified those the three gateway locations, plus the neighborhood fall planting plan, plus the division of trees amongst the wards, I think it's, you know, it, it seems it seems some it seems that it, it's more work, but in the end, actually, I think it's just it's it functions a little differently, and it's something that we just have to kind of get used to. But I think going forward, having a five-year plan probably would not be a bad. Well, that's, well, that was part of the uh, document that I drafted was uh, kind of a, a plan plan. So how do we get to that and then how do we kind of more institutionalize so that it survives us uh, the the schedule, the roles and responsibilities of all the 
people that are involved in this to make it happen. So I had the, the, the five-year plan itself and then roles and responsibilities of each group and subgroup, the schedule, and then having the, the one-year planting priorities, which can then be dialed down to, you know, the site plans themselves. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we'll meet more on that and start having that be our uh, summer project. Well, part of five years would be, the, we already spoke about this at the here, is that if you had a five-year plan and you had financing, you could potentially have trees grown and would then fit the spots that you want. Uh, remember we, we discussed yes. yep. Contract growth, yeah. Contract growth, because what's going to happen is you, whatever plans you make, so far, the experience is that you get the trees that they grow, and that, yeah. the, and that then you put them where they Fit. grow. Right. And, that, that's, and, and that's, so I think having a five-year contract for tree, like contract growing trees, would be great, because then you can plan way out, like a couple years ahead, mm -hmm. and say, look, we're gonna get a whole bunch of honey locusts, we're gonna take up some tree pets, and we're gonna plant them. Like, mm -hmm. now you might take them up, I, I, I don't know if there are right now, you know, suitable honey locusts waiting for us, maybe they are. Whatever. Okay. It's all fit together. It's a big piece. It's a big piece yeah. of work. Yeah. yeah, it's a big thing. There's, you know, with Tree Northampton, whatever this, this, sub, this subcommittee that we'll talk about next, and just making sure everyone's on the same page, and then getting the schedule, I think, in, in place will help us so we're not always scrambling and trying to remember where we are in the process. Anything else on the plan, Mitch? No. Uh, okay, so this is this a report of the planting subcommittee, which what, what do we know what this next interest I'm not really okay. sure. Um, we haven't had a meeting yet, so I'm not but I hear I'm on it. Yes, you are. Okay. One, two, three, I think it was okay. the four of us. Well, I'm not sure, yeah. but I'm yeah. two, three, four. I'm chair. I'm somebody. Two, chair. Uh, <laughs> chair. Don't don't really have anything other anything to report. I guess I, I could just say that the um, there are trees to be selected for the fall or, no, Orchard Street planting, mm -hmm. and so we we could. I mean, or, by that I mean there are, there are trees, suitable trees that we've already <coughs> purchased that we could decide are the ones that will be the trees, and then we can set them aside because otherwise they're kind of like moving towards getting planted possibly somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I guess we should probably uh, fl float some emails around and maybe pick a time where we can kind of sit down and probably talk about the that planting and talk about the planting potential planting at the Collegiate Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can I show you that print? I don't really have one that's clean, but that was not that one. Okay. All right. I think. Okay. Well, did, I can, did, we, did we look at that? Wait. We did. I, it's it's a uh, it's a plan that we have. I couldn't all, remember if it was that or if it was Con Street. That was Con Street. I'd have okay. to just give you, we have, I just have to walk a plan. So we did for Con Street is I had that big plan that mm -hmm. I emailed folks out, which was just basically a, a section of our GIS mapping system. So I would do the same thing for the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then we could just write all over it and kind of figure out exactly what we could plant there. And I think it would be good to try to do that planting project as well this year so we don't lose their interest obviously and we reached out to them and said we're going to do something and we have a yes so yeah. they said do it i think they wanted to do it but I, they're waiting for a plan so i think it would be good for the four of us to sit down that's a good idea um and i think you'll probably have more time after school yeah yeah probably. give me like at the halfway through next week is the end of the semester and then there's okay. finals but like in two weeks i'll be like significantly different so place. do you can you send the Three of us an email. Yep. As to when some time would be good for yep. you to meet. Yep. You're the one that's, I mean, I know Todd, you're busy. Are you free during the day? Sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, I'm good. Okay. All right, and then some clarity around uh, just roles and responsibilities and that group as well should probably be. Yeah, hashed out. Yes. Yep. Okay. More to come on that. Uh, so ordinance 
planning update, a uh, couple things on this. So I did meet with uh, Councillor Nash, who's the, I believe the new chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, we had a good uh, hour plus discussion around the role of trees in traffic calming. And so I went through with him each of our comments on the traffic calming manual uh, and kind of the rationale uh, behind it. Uh, they seem to be in the weeds with uh, other items, so I don't think that this manual is going to get picked up anytime soon. But um, I think the, the conversation is, is open and has started, and I was, was encouraged by what I heard from him that he was you know, open to uh, basically our main point was you know, coordinate our tree planning with your traffic calming work uh, and coordinate with the tree warden so that everyone in DPW is on the same page. Um, and so then you can capitalize other traffic calming tools if and when we've already prioritized an area to get, uh, kind of have a lot of uh, shade trees put in and uh, constrict the visual cone of the driver so that other traffic calming mechanisms may or may not be necessary after you do that since it is a, an actual traffic calming tool. Um, so we seemed to get it and I was encouraged by the discussion. Awesome. Um, I also revised uh, lightly the draft ordinance um, after uh, talking with Molly uh, Frothersher on uh, other cities and towns and if anyone else had done what we were attempting to do and after uh, we kind of hashed that out and we were both understanding each other, um, I removed the 20-foot the, um, the uh, setback element and we'll work with the city solicitor to put in the proper language around what trees the, uh, the possible uh, ordinance permit uh, proposal would actually cover. So it'd be public shade trees, and then it'd be also anything that was probably is a public shade tree planted through the setback program as well. So we'll just get that language clarified and see if that permitting structure that we laid out makes sense still. What did she say about other towns? having that legal problem? <clears throat> uh, so while, so any tree planted within 20 feet of the right of way can be a public shade tree. It is not, n not every tree within 20 feet of the public right of way has yet to be universally, unilaterally claimed as a public shade tree. And that was the, oh. that was the limit we were, I was pushing. Back to Generally, you, you, you don't claim, right? I mean, you generally go up to volunteer. Yeah. Well, volunteer or planted by the city, like right. we're doing with right. the, uh, right. the uh, separate. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we could ask people if they would like to volunteer their tree, their existing tree. I suppose so. Yeah. Yes. If they wanted to have it protected in yeah. perpetuity. Yeah. Well, we want to have it pruned without doing it. Right. Yeah. Well, and but bi binding on any future. Yeah. 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 It's like a little mini CR. On a tree. Yeah. <laughs> what it appears to be, it is odd. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Um, so I guess we'll meet with the city uh, attorney at some point and then, like I said, re-look at it and see if it still makes sense to pursue the, the permit path. The permit path. Well, that or the ordinance itself was a significant tree uh, impact permit. So yeah. setting up it was setting up a process through which someone would would go through the process if they wanted if they were going to impact a public shape right. with right. A, a driveway or yep. whatever. So this, so I'm, I'm totally confused about this. I don't know why I can't keep this in my head. So what you're working on is cleaning up the significant tree ordinance that already no. exists. This is a Touch new, right, okay. So this is a, something new that then would have to go through and get approved. So right now the only protection of a public shade tree mm -hmm. is MGO. Right. Okay. In this city. Okay. Other cities have placed a, <coughs> another layer yeah, got it. on top of that, mm -hmm. or below that, however you look at it, mm -hmm. to provide more clarity on what the formula is for compensation uh, right now. It's like an open right. negotiation, yes. what have yes. you. So yep. this would would codify mm -hmm. that formula and would codify what is permitted without a permit and right. what what 
what constitutes an impact to a public safety where you have to go through this process, which would then make it so the tree board is not waiting to be notified from the plan from a, another uh, committee or, or, or department. It, it's part of the permit package that an applicant would have to submit. And so the tree board is virtually guaranteed to be involved in the process, no matter if the applicant or the other um, uh, board did or failed to notify the tree mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. And that would override all the little conflicting regulations or written stuff in all the right. zoning board, the building. Right, right. so in yeah. order to get a driveway permit, Mm -hmm. or what have you, mm -hmm. you would have to get a check off from mm -hmm. the tree board that that, board, that that permit was filed and awesome. approved. Mm -hmm. right. That's the general. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. I just, um, I so, so that <coughs> Yes. And then would, would we um, share it with various other departments so that they, they were aware of it? Well, we wouldn't, but the uh, <coughs> Staff would, yeah. 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 And they all would have to abide by it rather than going back and changing each one to match. Mm -hmm. Right, it would be part of the permit process for every, every so every permit, so, so like for Todd, just like, like a site plan, that, that would trigger this permit. So, so trees, it's not mentioned here, but trees that are covered by the significant tree ordinance, in reality, you would have to get a permit for each one of those trees that you were going to mess with, potentially. If, 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 it's, if you only if we make the applicability trees covered by the significant tree ordinance. Okay, so I'm not necessarily suggesting. I'm suggesting no. that only public shade trees within the right of way or those within okay. 20 feet right. that have been planted by the city and are now city property okay. would be covered by this ordinance. Okay. But so we can so building side plan, trench, driveway, curb cut, etc. Yeah. Well, before we were saying any tree that touches you know within 20 feet of the right away would be applicable to this right. where we've now said okay we can't go and do that right. taking we'll shrink it back to what we're authorized to do under MGL whatever it is yeah so so when, so when a resident takes out a building permit presently and they are just renovating their existing house or adding an addition to the house and they are encroaching within their legal limits to the public right away to build this addition. I would never be notified um, if there was going to be any work done near the tree unless I caught it on a trench permit because I'm the highway superintendent, not because I'm the tree warden, or on a driveway permit. But in that case, if they're using their existing driveway, there is no driveway permit. And there is really, uh, to do a foundation, you don't need a permit. You don't need a trench permit in Massachusetts. So in reality, someone could build an addition on a house on Crescent Street that happened and they built an addition on a house and they had an excavator, a little mini excavator and a bunch of soil piled against this public shade tree. So I, I would have, this permit really kind of would have, this would have caught that. Yeah. And so I would have to sign off, sort of like on the the building permit itself or some kind of permit process the tree work to check off to say that yes, this has been filed and yes, tree protection measures have been uh, installed and you know there will be an inspection after the work is complete sort of like the driveway permit is now I go back three times or I go three times so um, sort of like the significant tree ordinance that's what I do now is that I actually am notified by by Carroll Mission Planning that these projects are going down the pike and then I get the inventory plan and then I actually go and meet on site with the developer or the resident whoever it may be to talk about the tree protection for the public shade trees and then I look at the significant tree, uh, the inventory they have, and make sure that it is correct, um, and that we're all in agreement. And then, you know, if they have to do a lot of removals, then there's a mitigation factor. So this, I think this was would be really good because it would catch all those areas that presently now are not, I, I don't catch them. Unfortunate, if I was just the tree warden and not the highway superintendent, I wouldn't catch mm -hmm. three quarters of what, mm -hmm. You know, it would all be like well, just by driving by and seeing things, but I stop and look at everything, or at least I try to. Well, and as we saw when we started this four years ago, as we yeah. reminded us depressingly, yeah. um, that, that 
the, in order to, to achieve the same thing without a new ordinance is a mess and would right. take right. tweaking numerous yeah. uh, bylaws and ordinances. So this, is, to me, is a cleaner, simpler, yeah. new revenue right. stream generating yeah. system that closes all that right. the loop for the function. Will the, will the final product, Todd, be an additional document or just an additional language within an existing document? The uh, final product would be a new city ordinance adopted by city council, All right. wedged into whatever you know part of the zoning code that's open. Mm -hmm. So every permit that would be handed out that would that would impact the shade use, this would be part of that package. Package, yeah. That, would go out, that they would have to fill out, and they would have to identify the trees. That's good. So. Okay. Uh, so look, Tree Northampton. See, look, Sue's not here. She would be probably able to report tonight. But um, I can say that uh, yesterday was a Tuesday Valley Day, and Tree Northampton did raise some money, which will keep us afloat so we can continue what we do. That was very good. How much did you get? You know, I, that's the thing. I, I looked it up, but I can't remember what it was now. I, I, at least a thousand dollars. Oh, oh yeah, that was could have been more, much it's more. Uh, I only was keeping track of up to a thousand because we we spend that much every year. So if we don't get it, then we we need that. So I don't know how much. Nice. Anyway, and um, so that's good. Um, the it's taken a long time. The, the way volunteers are organized is always reorganizing itself. And so it's been a very a bit of a slow spring in a lot of different ways, but I see that we're organizing ourselves a little bit differently. So it, what's happening that I'm very happy about is that there are beginning to be uh, groups kind of based on day of the week huh. that will uh, organize around being on that crew and that will be less, um, in need of uh, minus their own being there. So there's sort of a little more independence growing, a little more um, uh, co somewhat cohesive groups, early stage. You know, how to organize, I mean, it, it ends up sort of obvious, well, why not get some different groups that meet on certain days and have them, but it wasn't obvious. So we couldn't do it until then. So cool. We got like the Monday, the Wednesday, and the Sunday. And then people can kind of, when they wake up on that day, think, well, I should be planting a tree. It'll just become part of it. That's a, that's a big thing. That's, that's come a long way in two years. Mm -hmm. Really? It's come right? a long way in two years. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, there, there are more and more volunteers. And so it's more and more, it's less about like, finding volunteers. It's mm -hmm. how to make good use of it. Yeah. Use yeah. time. Um, that's the hard part. Great. Right. Thank you. Marilyn, you have a brief update on the legacy tree planting program? Honestly, I don't. Um, okay. Lily put that on, which is okay. Maybe it'll be part of a regular agenda item, but um, yeah, I don't have anything. Where do we leave? What are our, where do we need to ask? Remind me, I can't forget. What, what are the next steps on? Yeah, I was just looking at my notes from the last meeting. Um, is this related to the? I think it was further the, research. Is it the veteran thing too, or no? Is that, I, I, I can talk about. I can talk about that. Okay. <coughs> well, no, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I was just trying to refresh my mind. Well, we were. I'm, I'm going to look at some examples at UMass, and somebody mentioned that Luke Park also has something, and um, Sue was going to do some research um, regarding see if it. They might be able to set up a restrictive fund for our legacy tree program. And is legacy memorial? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So just kind of get us. Memorial is part of it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be bigger than that. Yeah, it could be somebody who's passed, but it could be somebody who's alive too. Right. So, yeah. Right. 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 So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If anybody has any further thoughts, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just kind of. Get it done. <laughs> cool. All right.
register on the, 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 the veteran thing? Yeah, so the Liberty, I think I came. This was not anticipated by no. the show. Sorry, I'll make it quick. So the Liberty Tree program <laughs> was a uh, program that was a gentleman came and met with the mayor and myself and uh, was asked, asking us if we would host this program in our city. And he was basically going around canvassing other communities to see um, if other communities would buy into this. Uh, so the Liberty Tree program is a uh, program that's uh, been put together by veterans in Boston um, where they would actually uh, donate funds or they would purchase trees to be planted in per participating municipalities and each tree would uh, represent a, uh, a fallen veteran. Mm -hmm. um, and bless you. the goal was to have uh, some trees planted at Park Street Cemetery this year because it is the 150th um, anniversary of the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, mm -hmm. Park Street, the longest mm -hmm. running Memorial Day parade in the United States, apparently. Wow. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't heard from him. So I did reach out to him. I sent him an email. Um, and just, um, the barbershop guy? No, 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 no. The gentleman who was actually, this, this was the gentleman that came from Boston who was oh. the Liberty Tree guy, uh, oh. the Liberty Tree representative, oh. and his wife, and I have not heard back from them. And they said they were going to get back to us once they had a. Uh, set of communities and a set of amount of funding. Um, I told them the best way to, to, to work this program would be for them to actually purchase the, the trees mm -hmm. uh, in the nursery and actually just have them delivered because mm -hmm. we don't have to go in front of city council because I can take gifts up to $25,000 related to trees that no cars. <laughs> $50 is the other one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> $49. Yeah. So that's, that's really... You know, so actually I was thinking about this before when Lily, uh, Lily Thar came here to talk about the Tree Speak program. One of the ideas, one of the thoughts from the Liberty Tree program was to have some type of identification on the tree so it could actually reference the veterans. So I thought that it would be interesting that we could actually maybe use the Tree Speak um, model to actually capture that for those particular trees. That's a neat idea. And get their actual voices on there? Uh, the what? Well, well we're talking about yeah. fallen people. Yeah, aren't yeah fallen, fallen people. people. So it would be, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, we can get other veterans maybe. Yeah, that would be neat. But I think the Tree Speak program will most likely, if we, and I'm waiting to hear back from uh, Madeline about, you know, next steps with that program that, with, that Lily and she yeah. actually came to our meeting two meetings ago. Um, because I think that Smith would like us to actually host the Tree Speak um, software and everything on our on the city's website. So, well, certainly, regardless of the donation of the stock, the, the idea still sinks in with what Maryland's researching, and then could mm -hmm. help capitalize on uh, yep. the Tree Speak kind of all tied together thing. Yeah. So, just kind of waiting. I don't know what they just got hung up or what, but. I think it's. I think it's a good. It's, I think it's a really good program. Sorry if we already discussed this, but um, if we get this, when we get this legacy program established, will the trees that we're planting in this program be drawn from the two fifty a year that we're already planning to plant, or would it be in addition or separate? That's a good question. Up to us. I, I, I'm under the. I mean, my thought process is the more the merrier so if we go over the 250 and we're able to do it great mm -hmm. um you know last year we did 248 we felt shy of we needed two more chestnuts but we just or two <laughs> two other trees yeah. we, the, the weather just locked up and yeah. that was it but yeah um i went and watered them the other day i think they're gonna bud yeah oh. now it's in the tick there. infested field tick tick infected. Infected. Oh, were really? you covered yeah i went on a day that was oh. cold oh. Where, where was it yeah, uh, the uh, the lake, Fitzgerald Lake, oh, the field, really? Cook's Meadow. Uh, Cook's uh, Pasture. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The deer, the, the nasty. Lake, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, potentially it could be separate, mm -hmm. depending yeah. upon the location of the plantings and depending upon what type of tree we wanted to plant. You know, but again, it all really depends upon what's available. And that's the driving me around. I went to Wasix the other day to get the black gums from. Uh, for the Gazette, for, for the Gazette, and then Rob also had 
flagged a bunch of other black homes that were in containers that are still there and I'm actually thinking about just buying them and you know wear it um, I think uh, 172 trees that we're going to be taking in in this growing season right now so we need to get up to 250 so we'll have to buy some more trees to get to that 250 mark and so going to one second you would think you see a huge field of trees you think well the trees are there for us but you know you really have to you really have to walk through there yeah. as jake can attest to you yeah. have to really just look at everything and pick a good one to me yeah well there's a, mostly maple trees yeah no, that's mostly there have been a lot of fruit trees and then and then the black gum which we have been getting uh, we plant here are our, our b and they've been pretty nice looking i think but these are nice looking but they're in containers and so you know, uh, but uh they look like they're not too bad no you know we've kind of this yeah we're they, they're not totally pot bound yeah so we just everything is a negotiate kind of compromised yeah. negotiation and b ones looked almost entirely clay when they thick was quite yeah. yeah that was really it was probably picture of yeah it was it looked like yeah. the, 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 those i think were grown by one oh really yeah they, they said they did they said they grew them from seed and we had a little tour of the place yes where, where they're doing all sorts of they, there's someone there that likes trying stuff so he's got like a lot of experiments going on hmm. so he's doing, doing, a lot, doing a lot of propagation yes yeah, a lot of propagation oh. from and stuff so that was what was nice about those B and B ones. I mean, I don't know how we feel about the clay, whether that was good or bad. You saw it close. You didn't know you were there. I don't know if it's good or not. Yeah. Tracked all the way back to my house. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. We <laughs> had to scoop it all up yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. It's better to have them grown in clay and go into sandy loam than right. yeah. be grown in sandy loam and try yeah. to get in clay. Right. So it's so going to be tough. less yeah. happy in the clay. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, the, the, those trees were unusually nice, I thought. And, and those that we planted were the, the lesser ones from what we bought the year before, and then, then that's the end. That's all they did. Yeah. I have a couple other items to ask about. Sure. Um, did you already talk about this? But the my memory from last meeting about the um, where we're at with the neighborhood planting program and getting that on the website somebody was going to put it on the website so uh yes karen nelson can put it on the website but I, what i was waiting for was the final so we had made some revisions as a group yeah, oh. there, was, there was going to be a mock yeah tryout so, so oh. there was there was at revisions. the last meeting we did that no at the meeting before that oh. there were changes that we made to oh. it um and I'm not sure if Lily was supposed to make the changes and get it back to us oh. or not. I can't remember. I'd have to look at my Well, notes. I just wanted to catch up on where yep. we were at with that. And yes, we are going to ask the, Lily was going to reach out to her contacts on Orchard Street to actually right. get them to fill out the, to uh, the application yeah. so we can actually basically have a trial run. Um, so I assume Lily's on that case then. Oh, gladly bugger. Okay. And also, I was wondering, how did that EAB workshop go? I didn't go. Oh, you didn't go? No, I was not feeling very well, so I did not go. <coughs> did you go? No. It was in my office building, but I never had a chance to put my head in. Is that in Pittsfield? Huh? Okay. Huh? Anything else? Quick uh, list recap. We'll meet with the well. We'll meet as a subcommittee. Yeah. I'll we'll meet you with the lawyer. Yeah, it's always fun. He looks at that. And <laughs> tells us up or down. Okay. Um, I'll follow up on Lily on on that. A couple other things. I don't um, have any. Jay, Marilyn, you always have something. Well, I'm going to work on the legacy tree. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I have one more thing to report from the uh, tree Northampton. Is it Molly came out and planted, I think, the first set of trees. 
Yeah, I had never actually planted before. Yeah, mm -hmm. with yeah. us. So, so that was really nice. Yeah, that's what great. happens is that the circles constantly expand and we get new, yeah. new people. Do you have dates planned for additional plantings and prunings? Uh, no pruning until like August or if that. Yeah. And, and, um, and planting, absolutely. I mean, we'll, we'll, again, what we're trying to do is figure out a day that people think they might. So we'll be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. or, not that you're always available, but that you, they might be available. Mm -hmm. week looks good and trying to get you on a regular, trying to get a regular. Okay. Any other to-dos? Uh, I will send out an email to try to um, get some dates and times that we can meet. Maybe somebody can tell me how to do both. Jen, like four. Yeah, Jen, Jane, Jane, Rob, I think it you sworn in, is that? Oh, yeah. Yes, you have to do that yes, to yes. re up for the tree commission. No, not, no. Well, you have to get sworn in, you have to reapply. I, I sent Wait, you an email. Yeah. Oh, to do Molly, what? Molly, right. Jen, and Rob. Oh, you, Molly. All, I, I sent you an email with a link. You have to fill out an application oh. to be resubmitted so you can actually get reappointed. See, oh. see first okay. application. Okay, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a trick? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Is that it? Motion. Second. He's asking. It's me asking. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Thank you, everyone. All right.